All right. Father, be with us tonight as we study your word. And God, I just pray that uh, you would just speak to us. And Lord, I know tonight's just a reminder. And uh, God, again, we just thank you for your written word. And God, uh, we just love you. We praise you. We thank you for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to speak on the subject tonight of renewing our commitment. Uh, what kind of got me thinking about this was I was asked uh, around Christmas time uh, for a couple to renew their vows. And uh, I've done that a few times, not a whole lot of times, uh, but I, th for some reason it just kind of clicked uh, with that. Uh, it's not renewing vows. Uh, but it's renewing our commitment. Uh, if you have a handout and uh, want to look at the outline, number one, renewing our commitment to the gospel, uh, to the gospel. Number two is to discipleship, uh, to discipleship. And number three is to our community, to our community. And uh, one of the things those on the Long Range Planning Committee uh, can see, I didn't even realize this, but it goes right along with what we're doing. This, this outline here is exactly what we are doing in our Long Range uh, Planning Committee. Uh, turn with me to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, we're going to begin reading in 36 in just a second. In Acts chapter 1, we see the last words of Jesus Christ in verse 8, Acts 1, 8. And this is kind of an introduction here. Uh, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And folks, we know the last words of, of Jesus are important. On, you know, anyone's last words. Uh, are important. And here he tells us, all right, you know, he gives us a hint about wh what is about to come, and that is the, the giving of the Holy Spirit, uh, the day of Pentecost. And I like the word here, and you shall be witnesses. And our Jerusalem, you know, is, is our area right here, who, who we are. And one of the things we noticed uh, in our last meeting is we did a three-mile profile. They did. Uh, the State Department does that, and uh, we, we can kind of see who's in our area in the target age group there. Uh, now, in Acts chapter 2, we see the day of Pentecost, which be, began the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the birth of the New Testament church. We saw three things happen, to that, happen in that day. Number one, the Holy Spirit came in Acts chapter 2. The Holy Spirit baptized. There was a baptism of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit filled. There was a filling of the Holy Spirit. Afterwards, Peter preached the gospel of Jesus Christ and gave four proofs and truths about the resurrection of Jesus. The number one proof was the person of Jesus Christ. The second one was the prophecy of David. The third one was the witness of the believers. And the fourth one was the presence of the Holy Spirit. And at the end of chapter 2, Paul tells us what the church should be committed to. And that's where I want to pick up uh, the first thing in Acts 2, 36. It should be committed to the gospel. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. And, I mean, Peter doesn't mince any words, okay? He just simply says, you know, Jesus was basically here. You did not recognize him as our Messiah and Savior, and you were the ones that crucified him. Verse 37, now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and, and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? When you see the word cut to the heart here, I am telling you that is Holy Spirit conviction. Holy Spirit conviction. And folks, I'm just telling you, that's why we have an invitation. So many churches are not even having invitations anymore. And folks, you have to give time for the Holy Spirit to work. And we need to respond to the Holy Spirit. We really do. 
And then verse 38, And Peter said unto them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ uh, for the remissions of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord God will call. And I know there uh, are certain religions that this is the verse that they use uh, saying that you have to be baptized in order to be saved. Well, there's two things that I think I want to point out, and I have several times. Uh, number one, the thief on the cross never had time to come down off the cross and be baptized, but yet Jesus said, today I'll see you in paradise. Then the other proof is, what about the, all the Old Testament saints? I mean, none of them were baptized, you know, water baptism, but yet I am guarantee you we're going to see them in heaven. So Peter, right off the bat, was basically saying, here's what the gospel is. Jesus lived a perfect life. Jesus was born a virgin, of a virgin. And he lived a perfect life. He died on a cross for your sins. And that's, that's what this second part is. And folks, that's what the gospel is. And in our day and time, uh, for instance, I can hear people say, well, people are not interested in the gospel anymore. I beg to differ from that. Because our world is so messed up, folks. I believe people want the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, we have facts. We know Jesus lived. We know in the Word. We are reading from the Word of God that He lived, and it's true. And when we can share that truth with others, folks, I will say this. The number one priority in any New Testament church is the gospel of Jesus Christ. We exist to see people saved. And I'm all for programming. We need programs. But the number one goal of every New Testament church should be winning souls to Jesus Christ. And that, that's what Peter was doing. Matter of fact, uh, turn to Romans 10 with me. Romans 10. I know you know these, but I just want to remind you. Romans 10, verse 9. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Folks, that's where we get the term saved. All right, I know it's kind of a Baptist thing, and the world doesn't understand saved, but I mean we get it straight out of Scripture. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. And I love verse 13. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Folks, do you realize God wants everyone saved? He does not, and I know that's not going to happen, but the gospel is for everyone, red, yellow, black, and white. They are precious in his sight, and we need to share the gospel. This church, Rye Hill Baptist Church, needs to be busy sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with others. Now look at verse 14. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed, and how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? I'm telling you, uh, used to, I've even heard people say, well, everyone in America has heard the gospel. Folks, I beg to differ, disagree with that. There are places in America, if you were not raised in a Christian home, okay, if you did not, I mean, if you do not listen to Christian music or Christian radio stations, or if you just bypass that, there are people, I'm telling you, that, that have not heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we need to share that. We can't assume everyone's heard that is what I'm trying to say. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace and who bring glad tidings of good things. I got news for you folks. The gospel literally means good news. Good news. The best news I hear is one, when, when I hear somebody say, I got saved today. That is great news, folks. Why? Because we forget. All right, there is a hell, folks. 
You don't hear much preaching on hell anymore. Hell is real. And people that don't have Christ are going there. God did not send any. He does not send anyone to hell. Everyone has a choice. Everyone has a choice. We need to be busy about that. 2 Peter 3. Look at 2 Peter 3 with me. 2 Peter 3, verse 8. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. Because even in the text, you know, there were people in Jesus' day saying, hey, we've heard, we've heard this, we've heard this, we've heard this, you know. And it says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You know why he hadn't come? You know why he has not come yet? Because there are still, he, he is still giving opportunity for people to be saved. And then just look at the first two verses. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with great noise, and the elements, uh, uh, elements with melt of uh, fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Folks, I'm telling you, it is coming. The tribulation period is coming. The rapture of the church is coming. The second coming of Jesus Christ is coming. So we need to be busy, and we need to renew our commitment to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you know what, the gospel, I've thought about this many times. If you had to sum it up in two words, you know what those words is? Jesus saves. Folks, that's the gospel. That's the gospel. And it's not just the preachers, folks. We all, what, what did we read in Acts chapter 1, verse 8? We all, all right, we all should be sharing the gospel with others. So, renewing our commitment to the gospel. The second one is to discipleship. To discipleship. Look at verse 40. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received the word were baptized. Were baptized. See, they got saved first, and then they were baptized. They didn't get baptized in order to be saved. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added unto them. Hey, I'm telling you, folks, we don't have a growth in, in a room problem compared to the first church, all right? I mean, one day, 3,000 people got saved, and it was the disciples. I mean, it was their job, okay, to disciple them, all right, to, to uh, you know, learn them, to teach them uh, about the Word of God. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. What discipleship is, folks, it is teaching the Bible, teaching what the Bible says. What is our discipleship program? Well, folks, on Sunday morning, it's the Sunday school. Okay? That's why Sunday school is so important. I truly wish every one of our members that attend would attend Sunday school. I wish they would. There's two reasons for that. One is they'll grow in the Lord, and two is they'll be connected with a small group time. That way when something happens, for instance, in here, I mean, uh, Sunday we had 338 people. Well, folks, that's a big class, okay? And, and it's hard to minister, uh, you know, and, and I personally, I cannot minister to 338 people. But the teaching of the Word, the doctrine is so important and then the fellowship is so important. And you'll see that in just a minute. Matthew 28. Matthew 28. I'm going to remind you of this. Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and what? Make disciples. Folks, it's one thing for somebody to get saved. It's one thing for somebody to be baptized, and we rejoice when that happened. We've been baptized, and I'm telling you, I am so glad 
Our baptismal waters are moving. It thrills me. I wish I could baptize every Sunday morning. It would thrill my soul. But it's more than just being saved and baptized. Folks, it's teaching people the Word of God. It's discipling people. Okay? They, they are learned. This was the birth of the new church. Making disciples of all nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of an age. You know what a disciple is? A disciple is a learner. Folks, Jesus poured himself into the disciples. Jesus took, uh, you know, that time, those three years in his ministry to pour himself in. Why? Because they, he was setting them up for the New Testament church. They were going to be the leaders in the church. They were going to be teachers in the church. They were going to take these new Christians and they were going to teach them what the Word of God says. So yes, we need the gospel. We need to get people saved. But it doesn't stop there. We need to disciple them in God's holy word. It's so, so important. Psalm 119. Hold your finger there and go with me to Psalm 119. Psalm 119, verse 97. Folks, I'm telling you, we need to teach our folks to be in love with the Word of God. It needs to be the book that they can't put down. I mean, you've read books that, you know, you, you read and read till you just fall asleep with it in your lap, okay? And, and, and then the next chance you get, you're reading it again. Folks, that's what it's talking about. That's, that's what we need to do as we disciple people. We need to make them understand and help them understand this is God's instruction book. This is God's holy word. This is his love letter uh, to you. Verse 97, oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies. How do we know right from wrong, folks? It's the word of God. How do we know what we should be doing? It's the word of God. How can we find the will of God? It's the word of God. How do we know what a marriage should look like? Ephesians 5, it's the Word of God. And we need to teach people the Word of God. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. And, and really, you know, when we meditate on something, we don't get in a hurry, okay? We don't get in a hurry. Uh, reading the Bible through, I'm all for reading the Bible through, cover to cover. All right, but there needs to be time when you study. Reading the Bible is one thing. Studying the Bible is a different thing. Okay, studying, you, you slow down. You meditate. That's why I thank God for every one of our Sunday school teachers. I thank God because you pour over those scriptures during the week. You prepare a lesson uh, to teach every Sunday. And it is an awesome responsibility to do that. Verse 100, I understand more than the, uh, the ancients because I keep your precepts. Again, he's talking about the Old Testament. I have restrained my feet from every evil way that I may keep your word. I have not departed from your judgments. For you yourself have taught me how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey uh, to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Psalm 119.11 Psalm Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against God. Folks, discipleship is teaching people to love God. Teaching people to fear God. Helping to understand that the Bible is is a sword to help them to understand that the Bible is alive. I do not understand people that says the Bible is boring. I really don't. Uh, it is it's an exciting, the miracles and all that is in the Word of God. Let's go back to Acts chapter 2. We'll finish this 
last part of. Then fear, verse 43, then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. And again, it just authenticated who they were, okay? That's, that's why God gave them the gift of the Holy Spirit, and that's why they were anointed and, and the, laid hands on. All that was so that they could teach others and authenticate the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we see our a renewing of our commitment to the gospel and to disciples. And the last thing is to our community, to our community. Look at verse 44. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common. And it's talking about unity. Folks, I'm telling you, unity is so important in the church setting. The church setting is so important. And sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. Folks, that's what we try to do. We try our best to meet people's needs. Now look at verse 46. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple. Folks, it wasn't enough to meet once, uh, you know, when they began this new church. It, they didn't just meet on Sundays and Wednesdays. Daily means every day they were meeting. Why? Because it was so exciting. Because the Holy Spirit was so strong. Because so many lives were being changed. And, and you can... I don't know about you, but I love to be around new Christians. I mean, they are just excited. They're fired up. They got a smile on their face. You know, they are so excited. And, and that's what was going on daily and in one accord, breaking bread from house to house. And they did that too, folks. Uh, they, they, with this many people, they, they had house churches back then. They would go up many times on rooftops, and they would have a, a teacher or a disciple up there teaching these new converts. And they ate their food with gladness in simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. Folks, he's not saying just having favor with the church. Folks, people need to know who Rye Hill is. People don't need to know what Rye Hill Baptist Church is about. People need to know why we are here, and why we exist. And there's so many things going on right now. I just, I, I love the holiday season. I mean, you walk out our doors and you see the Christmas boxes there. And we were talking about, some of us men were talking about that. And, and they had heard testimonies, testimonies of when, when these grown men are given testimonies of where they got the shoebox. They got a shoebox when they were a kid. And it was the greatest thing up to that point in their life that had ever happened to them. And it changed. And Spiel was sharing a story of where this man was in, what country was it? Ukraine. And now he is in the United States and he works for the Samaritan's Purse. And it all started from a shoebox, folks. And, and I asked Cindy Sunday, I said, Cindy, how, how much does it cost to to fill one of those. And she said about $20. Well, folks, I'm just telling you, we if there's two of you, you can't get a meal for 20 bucks right now. All right, everybody's jacking up the food prices. <laughs> but you are investing in people's lives. That's why I am praying to God this Sunday that there is not going to be a shoebox left out there. Why? Because that's what, what did he say? In Jerusalem, in Samaria, Judea, the uttermost part of the earth. That's how we can be a part of the uttermost part. We are fulfilling the Great Commission by doing that. We are. With all the people, and not just Christians. Okay, people drive by. I love it when a, we get a visitor card every, night, every now and then. On the bottom of the visitor's cards it says, drove by your church. Just drove by our church. Folks, there's a word now going on, and and... When we started the Long Range Planning Committee, I had no idea what they, the first time I heard it, I didn't even know what they were talking about. It's called branding, okay, branding. And what it is, it's an identification of a church. When you see, we've got the new logo now, it is a, it is a beautiful logo, our new logo. You know, we're putting it on coffee mugs. 
We got hats coming out. We're going to have that on. That's what branding is. It is letting people know who we are and what we're about. Another thing that we're doing to let people know, uh, Steve and I, we're, we're, we're going to get these coffee mugs, and not the mugs, but the, they're the ones that keep stuff hot. And there, there are uh, 52 businesses within a mile and a half of our church. And we're going to go after the first of the year, and we're going to give them uh, a copy of who we are and give them the mug. You know, just to let, that's what branding is, folks. And you know what started all that? Someone went to a bank real close by, and they were asking questions about, you know, it, they were asking, and it's, it's a long story, but anyway, the, the teller there within eyesight of our church, we said, Rahel, they said, Rahel Baptist Church. She said, where is that? Okay? That's why, folks, I'm just telling you, we are obligated. Yes, we need, we need internal things going on. We need the church doing things. But just like, just like what we're doing, uh, uh, the veterans parade, what are we doing? We're getting in our van. We're going to put veterans on there. They're going to see our van. They're going to see us. You know, we're going to put some of our logo in cards. We're going to put our cards on candy, and we're chunking them out. Why? We're saying we're Rye Hill Baptist Church, and we want you to know our Jesus is what we're saying. And it says, and the Lord added unto the church daily those who were being saved. I'll never forget this happened several years ago, but well, I better not tell it. <laughs> I'll tell you privately if you ask this. Just an example of how some people think. Folks, everyone is a prospect. Everyone is our neighbor. Okay? That, that's, that's all I need to say. Matthew 25. Go with me to Matthew 25. Y'all might figure out what I was talking about or even who I was talking about. So we're going to bypass it. Don't even ask me. Okay, don't even ask me. Matthew 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the holy angels, folks, this is Jesus' words, okay? Jesus' words with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides the sheep and the goat. And he will send the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was a stranger, you took me in. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was sick, you visited me, and when I was in prison, you came to me. Folks, I'm telling you, our community, there are hungry people in our community. I love our food bank. I don't even, I've lost track of how long. Folks, we've been doing that for years, years, feeding the hungry in Fort Smith and the thirsty, strangers, you know, uh, before COVID, we were knocking on doors. I think uh, we figured up, Scott and I, at one time, we knocked, we knocked on over 500 doors in our Jerusalem in, in a matter of two to three years. And we need to pick that up. Folks, I am telling you, Chaffee Crossing is a gold mine, a gold mine. When the people from the Baptist building left, they drove through. They didn't come through Chaffee Crossing. And, and Marcus Brown called me as, you know, it was about 30 minutes after our meeting, and he said, we had no idea what was going on at Chaffee Crossing. And he said, you are setting in, on a gold mine. You are setting there, the, the houses that are being built there, you are setting in, in the prime place. And you know what Dale Thompson told me? We've had lunch before, and Dale Thompson says, your church is the most recognizable and greatest. You know what a realtor tells you? Location, location, location. And folks, I'm telling you, with all that's going on there, I truly believe, and I'm not predicting anything, but I believe we can fill this building up in the next 
four years if we will do these things that the Great Commission tells us to do. I think we can fill this place up. Why? Not to say we did it for the glory of God and to see people saved. Folks, people have to get under the sound of the gospel to be saved. They've got to hear the gospel to be saved. Look at verse 40, and I close. And the king will answer and say unto them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it unto the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. What was Jesus' life about? <laughs> I can tell you what it was about. It was about the gospel. So we want to be like Jesus? Folks, we need to recommit. We need to renew our vows to the gospel, to discipleship, to reaching our community for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the gospel. God, I thank you for your word. And God, I thank you that we are doing these things. I, I'm not saying we're not. But, but Lord, the, the, the city is full. The, the fields are white unto harvest. God, I truly believe we don't have a lot of time. If we're going to do something for you, we really need to do it. From here to, to 2022, uh, I, I really believe. So, God, I pray that you would just, and, and I, I thank you for the reminder. God, I know these, your folks, I didn't preach anything new to them. But, Lord, we need reminders of what we're about and why we are a church, why we are a church, God. It's, it's for you, God. It's for your kingdom. It's getting more people in the kingdom of God. It's trying to help folks. It's loving folks. Uh, it's showing them Jesus Christ and showing the love of Christ. God, we do so many things right. We really do. We visit the sick. Lord, we take care of our own. We disciple. We teach the Word of God Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. But God, help us never to be satisfied there. God, there's one more person that we need to talk to. There's one more household that needs to be saved. There's another door that needs to be knocked on. So God, I pray, Lord, that you would just be with us as we carry out the Great Commission as the people of Rye Hill Baptist Church. God, the church is not a building. Yes, we need a building. Yes, I'm glad we've got heat in the building tonight. But God, the church is the people. So God, help us to engage with prospects, to engage uh, with friends and neighbors and relatives. God, help us to be busy about your business. Because you are coming. There's no doubt in my mind you're coming. And God, I pray that we will be ready. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.